Hi, this is Twiggy. I would like to pay homage to one of heavy metal's greatest antichrist superstars, and that is Eddie, the skeleton located on all the Iron Maiden album covers. Eddie started out as a skeleton, and they took his brain out, and he became a mummy. Next thing you know, he's a spaceman. I don't know what happened to him since then, but you should check it out. Because without his, the image of Eddie, there would be no, um, well, there'd be no me. There would be no Jamiroquai. So Jamiroquai should really, you should, you know, be thankful for Eddie. And there'd be no Puff Daddy or Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie would not be able to dance on the ceiling without Eddie. So go out and get, if you can get vinyl, get vinyl. All the Iron Maiden album covers. You can throw the records away. Don't worry about the music. But just hang them on your wall because it'll make your life a lot better. Serena Alchil with MTV News. Rapper Keith Murray has spent the last few months in a frenzy of activity. In addition to the May release of the El Nino album from Def Squad, which featured Redman and Eric Sermon along with Murray, he's also been recording his third solo album entitled It's a Beautiful Thing. And recently he's been shooting some videos as well. So why all the rush? Well, Murray is looking at three years in prison on a 1996 assault conviction, and his appeals are running out. And because, as Murray told us, being part of a group and hitting the road this summer helped to motivate him to work on his own record. The Dev Squad album was a stepping stone just to help me get to where I wanted to be. And doing the tour, during the tour, you know, seeing people all around the world again have made me realize where I need to be as a solo artist. It was a lot of pressure off me with Eric and Redman having to hold up their part, you know what I mean? So now I see exactly where I need to be, what I need to write about, what I need to address, and how my fans perceive me better. Murray continues to hope that his fans won't have to see him behind bars, but you will see him in the video for the next Def Squad single, The Game. Sales figures from Wednesday's sound scan brought victory to the Corn campaign as the cutting edge rockers moved more than 268,000 copies of their appropriately named CD, follow the leader to land the number one spot on next week's Billboard album chart. On the record's opening night last week at Tower Records on the Sunset Strip, drummer David Silveria shared his sales prediction with John Norris. You know what? I'm just glad we didn't have to go up against Beastie Boys and the Snoop because we would have been down. Those guys, I can't believe the Beastie Boys and the Snoop number. Those guys are so fat. That's cool. We won't be numbers like that, but we'll do fine. Indeed, Korn's opening week sales were less than half of those of the Beasties or Snoop Dogg. Another artist who stands to cause an even bigger scene with his new record release next month is Marilyn Manson. Now that he's not causing an uproar in the heartland with his Route 666 tour, he appears to be getting dissed by a much more pretentious class of people. For starters, there's the New York Times Advertising Acceptability Department. They refused to carry the original version of an ad that promoted a Manson appearance at a record store because Manson's androgynous image was judged to be in questionable taste. Then there's the Wiltern Theater in downtown Los Angeles, which reportedly passed on the chance to host a Manson gig because of fears that his audience would wreak havoc on the landmark structure. Worst of all, the New York outlet of clothing designer Dolce & Gabbana declined to schedule a private sitting for Manson, as one DNG rep asserted that Manson did not fit that store's image. There you have it. That is the news for now. More news at 10 of the hour every hour right here on MTV. MTV News. You hear it first.